Farming is America's biggest industry. While most major American industries have made great advances in productivity, agriculture has outpaced them all. One of the reasons has been intense mechanization. Progress in mechanization has been impressive. However, some crops must still be harvested by hand, where such things as inspection, selection, cutting, or gentle handling are basic to quality. Yet even now, Practically every hand-picked crop is under intensive study. And a constant flow of new and remarkable experimental equipment is on trial, all designed to relieve man's age-old burden of manual labor. But until each piece of equipment can be shown to eliminate hand labor and reduce cost with no sacrifice in quality, until then, much of the work must still be manual and the placement of thousands of workers at the right place, at the right time, is an immense job, especially at harvest time. Overall, the job has been successfully carried through, even in the many crops calling for stoop labor. Here is stoop labor in the literal meaning of the term, but the term is also applied to many of the toughest and least desirable farm jobs. For example, no stooping here, yet because citrus trees are thorny, more difficult to pick than other fruits, most farm workers avoid this kind of job. All such farm jobs which are tough, dirty, or unpleasant are generally referred to as stoop labor. Understandably then, this is the only area in which the American farm labor supply falls short and is supplemented by Mexican citizens, sometimes called nationals or Mexican nationals. But the term most commonly used is braceros, in Spanish, this means a man who works with his arms and hands. It so happens that the braceros form a tiny fraction of the total labor force used on our farms. Yet some Americans feel even this tiny fraction should not be used. A typical dialogue pinpoints the major issues. Well, with Americans on relief rolls, why bring in foreigners to work on our farms? Makes no sense. Makes sense to the farmer, though. These braceros work for lower pay than Americans would. But doesn't the farmer realize he's cutting down American labor, cutting down our living standards? Why doesn't somebody do something about it? In short, the big question in many minds is why braceros? The question is so widespread that we consider it a public service to tell the why and how of braceros on American farms. Many field crops still call for stoop labor, especially at harvest time, when demand for labor is at its peak. It isn't easy to find men willing to take on such undesirable kinds of work, so the farmer must begin recruiting his seasonal labor force long before his labor needs reach the critical point. Once he's estimated the number of men needed, he goes to two potential sources. One of them is the Farm Placement Service, a combined federal and state agency which links men looking for work and farmers who have work to be done. Here, weeks before the season, the grower registers the jobs he has to offer, the types of work, the specific crops, the pay rates, and so on. This agency does an excellent recruiting job, but the farmer knows from long experience that workers able and willing to do this stoop labor are always in short supply. So he goes to a second source. A private labor recruiting association, the farmers organized effort to recruit a labor force of their own. Again, weeks in advance, he notifies the association of his needs. The farmer knows that if the domestic supply is, as usual, short, the association can, if authorized, we repeat, if authorized, supply braceros to compensate for the shortage. Why is this so critical? If labor is not on hand when the crop is ready, the crop, 
and the farmer's investment is lost. Which is why days before his harvest date, he revisits the farm placement service to see whether enough seasonal domestic labor is available to meet his specified needs. Even if this agency doesn't have enough, the farmer is not authorized to import braceros until he proves to the official satisfaction that the farmer's own recruiting service has utilized all the seasonal domestic labor available. What's more, federal law says that the farmer can bring in only the number of braceros required to fill the gap between the available domestic supply and the total number needed. For a better understanding, why not interview the agent himself? Would you mind answering a few questions for us, sir? Yes, I'd be glad to answer them. Do you get a great many requests for foreign farm workers, braceros? I'd have to say no to that question. Actually, uh, supplemental workers are a very small part of the farm labor force in California. In fact, not as many are being used now as a few years ago uh, because there are more domestic laborers now available for farm work. We use every possible recruiting method to ensure an adequate supply of labor, including newspaper ads, radio, recruiters, and a key location. I think we do a pretty complete job of recruiting domestic labor and that we meet most of the farmers' requests. Except for stoop labor, you mean? Well, we even supply a good deal of that. It's only when we can't find enough domestic laborers and the farmer has utilized all his sources that we approve the use of nationals. And no farmer is authorized to hire braceros unless he agrees to continue every effort on his own to recruit and hire domestic workers wherever they might be available. He must pay foreign workers at a rate no less than domestics doing the same kind of work. He has to keep us currently advised of the status of any activity in which he's using foreign workers. These regulations guarantee the employment rights of domestic workers and nationals are used only when the domestic labor supply just can't meet the need. Thank you, sir. The farmer now brings his certification for Braceros to his own labor recruiting association. And as has been seen, this certification for Braceros is fully authorized by state and federal authorities. All the facts are checked and double checked and only if they meet the preset conditions can the order be put through. Only now can the manager of the Farmers Association process through further channels the request for the authorized number of braceros. This involves placing the order with the proper authorities at the Mexican border. The association manager himself can give us interesting details. Excuse me, sir. Did you order those nationals just for that particular farmer? No, that uh, request represented an accumulation of eight orders from growers in this area. When we receive a sizable amount of orders, we then call the El Centro Reception Center and place our order for foreign workers. But how does the reception center at the border get several hundred workers ready so fast? From uh, past experience, we know roughly the number of Mexican nationals that will be needed to supplement the local labor in this area. We also know the seasonal high demands for this type of labor. So when growers come in uh, from the, with authorizations from the California Department of Employment certifying that a local labor shortage does exist, and I speak now in terms of stoop labor, we then are all geared, ready to go. But isn't it through your organization that farmers also try to recruit domestic farm workers? Yes, that's true. Uh, here is an example of several ads that we run locally in an attempt to attract stoop labor. We also have used radio as a means of recruitment 
in states such as Texas and Arizona. The results of this recruitment effort, as it applies to uh, picking pears, peaches, and apricots, has been fairly good. However, as it pertains to stoop labor, the results were practically nil. Doesn't the Department of Employment supply a good deal of the stoop labor required? Uh, yes, sir. But even with their excellent organization and their experienced personnel, they are unable to supply us with all the stoop labor that is needed in this area. For example, uh, during the 15-day recruitment effort on the part of the California Department of Employment, we requested these number of workers. We had daily transportation available at the farm labor office. As a matter of fact, we requested over 1,100 workers. The Department of Employment was only able to recruit 725. This immediately created a shortage of stoop labor of over 450 workers. And this is where the Mexican National comes in, where the local labor will not. Thank you, sir, very much. And so, in practically all such jobs, the farmer has all the domestics he and the recruiting agencies can find, plus broseros to fill the gap. The entire crew, domestic or foreign, is paid at exactly the same rate. But, and this is very important, even after the broseros are at work in the fields, domestic workers still have priority. The federal law is specific about this. Any local who wants to work has transportation all ready to take him out to the field, where the farmer must take him on, even if it means pulling out a bracero to whom he is already committed by contract. Yet, even with free transportation provided by the farmers, it is seldom that a bracero is made idle. Now, what about the treatment of braceros? Are they mishandled or mistreated in any way? The gentleman at the center of this scene is Senor Antonio Islas, the Mexican consul very close to the Bracero program. Listen to what he has to say on this question. First of all, let me clarify a point. These men I'm speaking to are no wetbacks. The name applies to Mexicans who enter your country illegally. These men I speak to are known as Braceros. They enter your country through a careful, regulated program worked out between my government and yours. Now to your question as to how the braceros are treated. The best proof they are well treated is that the Mexican government has allowed the continued temporary immigration of the workers and that a great number of them have returned here many times. The international agreement for this program set up the highest possible standards for a working conditions, living quarters, food, and welfare for the Mexican worker. This program is without doubt well carried out, taking into consideration the number of Mexican temporary workers who come to this country. I find that very few misunderstandings arise and very few errors are committed. Both Mexico and United States benefit from this program. Mexico assists the American farmer with workers when there is a farm labor shortage and the United States provides additional income to the Mexican worker which improves his economy. As I say, both sides gain. In my contacts with the braceros, I can summarize my impression by saying they are pleased to come to work in the United States. And what of the money earned by the braceros? Is it all, as some people claim, drained out of this country? Hardly. Look at the braceros when they come here. It is obvious they need a great many things, like clothes, for instance. Where do they spend their money? As a local merchant put it. As a matter of fact, they spend a great deal of their money right here. They buy clothing and other domestic items, such as transistor radios, luggage, home furnishings, 
items that aren't readily available back home. Take a look at the braceros when they come into this country, and again when they leave. They have brand new shirts, pants, shoes, all items bought right here locally. Let's look at this in a little different angle. Uh, the stoop labor situation being what it is, I don't see how the local farmers can get along without braceros. Without this source of labor, many farmers are going to be unable to make a profit. And we sure don't want this to happen because the farmer is still our best customer. Yes, with the domestic supply of farm labor being inadequate, braceros are a must. But some people say to the farmer, well, make the pay high enough and you'll pull in all the domestic labor you need. The fact is that farm wages have gone up steadily for many years, but we still don't have enough seasonal domestic labor willing to do this kind of work. Conclusion. Unless we have braceros to fill the gap, many stoop labor crops will be forced out of American agriculture. The consequences? Much of our food processing industry's output would be replaced by imports. These jobs, now held by Americans, would be taken by workers in other lands, and our plants and equipment would be slowed down or shut down. Jobs and investment in the transportation industry would feel the blow. Example, in a recent typical year in just one state, the transportation of such familiar items as lettuce, fresh and processed citrus, asparagus, and tomatoes totaled over $166.5 million. Remove these familiar crops from production and these millions now going into transportation would disappear, hitting both its management and its labor force. These same crops from the same state in the same typical year required many types of containers, lids, caps, and labels, over $112 million worth. Cut out this $112 million worth, and what happens to the thousands of people who work in or invest in these allied industries? And these are just a few of the allied industries whose management, machinery, production, and labor force are all geared to the availability of these familiar crops, harvested for the most part by braceros. If all such crops are driven out of American farming, Many jobs in allied industries would be lost. Many segments of our economy would feel the blow. The solution to the problem? As we said, even now, machines to eliminate stoop labor are in the pilot stage. Until they're ready, Los Broceros are a necessary supplement to our domestic crews. In Spanish, Broceros means a man who works with arms and hands. But in American lingo, they are called lifesavers. And they are, not only to the farmer, but to the housewife, the grocer, the transporter, the canner and processor, and to all of the other industries whose output and very existence are so closely interlocked and dependent on the continued supply of such crops.